Hey, just want to thank everybody for all the nice comments that you've been adding to the uh, comment section under these videos. It really adds to the conversation. You guys have some great ideas on how to make some of the tricks better, some alternate versions of performing performing them and you really have some really really good ideas so keep it up it's really fun to see uh, everybody's two cents kind of thrown in and I really appreciate the kind words it's, it's really been a lot of fun uh, in fact speaking of that this trick comes to me by way of one of our subscribers by the name of Glenn he wrote me a little note and said have you ever seen this trick and he described it to me and I thought no that sounds great can I make a video about it and he said yeah well, after we had that conversation, I realized I actually had seen the trick. It took me a while to remember it, and I thought of a slightly different way of doing it. So, uh, Glenn, we're going to do your trick uh, that you described me with a little bit of a twist. I, th I hope you like it. Thanks for, uh, thanks for the input. And it's a great trick. Here's what happens. Basically, it would be better if I had a spectator here, because in this trick, the spectator handles the deck of cards the whole time. What happens is you give them the deck and they can shuffle them up any way that they want to. And in fact, and cut them, of course, they can make a mess out of them. And it's kind of good if they do. Anyway, let's say they do that. They've cut them up and they've shuffled them. And the whole time that they're doing that, um, you're just watching and you're holding the box that the deck came in. Now, once they're settled out on uh, where they want the cards to be, shuffled and, not, uh, shuffled and cut and messed up and all that, you're going to say, you know, I've been holding this box the whole time, but can you hear this little rattle? You hear that sound? That's because inside this box, this whole time, I've had a prediction. It's really amazing that there's a prediction in here, but that's not the amazing part. There's something else that's amazing. I don't know if you've noticed, but on the outside of the box, there's even a prediction. It's printed by the Bicycle Playing Card Company. Even they made a prediction. And in fact, it's the only card that's printed on this box. If you look at it, they have printed a card and it says 10 of hearts. You ever notice that? Well, I also made the prediction. I took a card from a different deck. It's the only card in here. And I predicted 10 of hearts as well. So Bicycle knew something and I knew something. But did you know after you shuffle the cards that you would end up with the 10 of hearts on top? Isn't that amazing? Now, um, of course, that would go a lot better if we had somebody here doing it. It's a lot more fun to have somebody messing with the cards and we can play with that and talk to them. But that's the basic structure of the trick. They literally uh, end up with the... Ten of hearts or whatever card you want to force actually you can force any card you want because that's what it is you're left clean here and um, pretty much left clean pretty much everywhere let me show you how it works because it's really really cool it's easy to do it's easy to make because you do have something you need to make so first of all um, obviously i forced the ten of hearts and so i took a ten of hearts from a blue pack and put it in the box easy to do I also took the card I'm going to force, the Ten of Hearts, set it aside, and then there's something that I made, and I'm going to show you how I made it. It's one of these. I mean, one of these. It's called a top of the box gimmick, right there. Very easy to make. I took an old box, took an X-Acto knife, and I cut this out. I took the box apart and laid it flat, basically, and then cut this out. I took an old Joker and glued it to the back of it and ended up with a playing card gimmick that has a matching face like this. Now, really easy to do, and I'm not super artsy, craftsy kind of a guy, so if you looked at this up close, you'd see it's a little bit crooked, but it still works pretty good. Um, some of you that are better with an X-Acto knife could probably make an even better looking one. You can actually buy these, uh, and, and they're, I think they're called top of the box gimmicks. But um, in fact, here's a, here's a commercial one here for a blue case. But when you buy one, what's good about it is it actually comes with the box and it's actually magnetized. So you can see, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but it actually sticks to the box better like that. This one has a blue uh, back, of course and um, it doesn't fall off. <laughs> you don't have to hold it like I did. But, you know, you have to buy that and the, the, the box is gimmicked and all that kind of stuff. And in fact, this one, uh, there's no, uh, it's, it's an old box, so the Ten of Hearts thing would, wouldn't happen here. I'd have to force a different card or whatever card we wanted. But anyway, my point is, you don't have to buy one. You can make one. And mine's not magnetic. I don't think it has to be. Um, what I did instead was I took the card that I'm going to force 
and I put it right there and I put the top of the box gimmick and I put it right there and I simply held them together the whole time. And the reason I can is because the spectator is handling the cards. So they've got a deck of 51 cards here because the 10 of hearts is missing. They can mix them all they want while you watch. And all I'm really doing is I'm just holding this like this and there's nothing else to do except hold this. So it's great. Now, the reason why I did this thing with the 10 of hearts being on the box, because all bicycle cards of this style have that 10 of hearts there. The reason I did that is because I really wanted a better reason for putting the box on the deck when they're done. I wanted to draw attention and say, hey, let me show you something about this box. And it gave me a good reason to put the box down there. The other reason um, I did that this way is I had I wanted them to end up a little bit messy. So as they're mixing up the cards, um, they don't have to square them up. And if they end up squaring them up, you can just kind of, you know, give them, say, make, you know, make sure you, you got them the way you want them. And you just leave them a little bit kind of messy if you can. Because what happens is when you put the box on the um, deck, you're leaving these two cards behind, right? You're leaving your gimmick and your force card behind. So I think it looks better if the cards are a little bit askew. Anyway, the point is, you say, I've got a prediction in here, but you want to draw attention to the box. So it makes sense to set it down and go, look at that box. Look what's on there. There's a 10 of hearts. And now I like the fact that the box is sitting up here kind of on stage. It's in play, if you will. So we can point to it. As soon as I pick the box up, it's actually clean now. There's nothing about it that's tricky because I've left the gimmick behind. And so I can point out the Ten of Hearts there. I can point out the Ten of Hearts here. And of course, we've left the Ten of Hearts on the packet right there. So very easy to do. Um, I just got to make one of these. And that's pretty simple. So again, if you don't want to do with the Ten of Hearts thing, that works too. I use it as an excuse. I think that works pretty good. And I think it is amazing. When I was first presented with this idea, it, it wasn't even with a top of the box gimmick. It was simply to have the box off to the side of the table like this, either like this or like this, it just didn't matter. Um, and then go through all that rigmarole and maybe have the cards be you know really messy like this, and then just throw the box on top. Now, what I didn't like about that is one, it's a little bit hard to pick the box up without exposing the, uh, the card that you're hiding. But if you can do that, all you end up doing is throwing the box down like this and then saying something, for some reason to put it there. And when you lift it up, of course, you've dropped the 10 of hearts. So the, what I think is an improvement is to use that top of the box gimmick because they're so easy to make. And that way you can, show that you can show the box here the whole time. You can just be holding it. That keeps it safe. You don't have to pick it up and worry about you know, giving anything away. Uh, so anyway, I like that better. So you got the top of the box gimmick. Okay, I'm, I'm listening to the rattle. And then as I set it down, I say, look, look at this right here. I'm drawing attention away from the gimmick and saying, look, have you noticed there's a card there? Isn't that amazing? There's a card here. And of course there's a card here. So that's that. I like it a lot. If you have any other ideas for that, you guys have been great about adding to these tricks. So please comment and, uh, let me know what you think. But go ahead and make one of these or buy one of these if you want. They're pretty cool. Top of the box gimmick. You can do a lot of other things with it too, by the way. That is just one idea. And, uh, and it's easy to do, easy to make. Go have fun with it.